Hi guys, welcome back to another one of my draw box videos. In the previous videos, I've shown you guys myself doing all the other exercises for lesson 1. And today, I'll be doing the 250 boxes challenge. This has to be the most well-known exercise in all the draw box course. So, how do you do this exercise is really straightforward. As you can probably tell from the name, you're told to draw 250 boxes. All of these boxes have to be done freehand and be in 3-point perspective. Also, once you've finished a page of boxes, you need to check if the edges of the boxes line up with the 3 vanishing points. If you plan to do this yourself, let me just warn you beforehand that this is going to take a long time. It took me over 6 hours across a few days to finish this exercise. So, Make sure you block out a chunk of your time before you get into it. Here you can see that I'm already getting right into the exercise. But do stay tuned because in the next section of this video, I'll be giving the basic tips and cues that I've picked up while doing this exercise. So I'm sure if you pay attention to those, you will definitely get more out of this exercise much quicker. I'm actually using a gel pen instead of the recommended fine liner or felt tip pen. This is because all the nibs of my other fine liners have worn out after doing the previous few exercises, so I don't really have any other choice. I will describe my full thought process when drawing each box in the next section of this video, but basically how I go about it is to start off with the Y shape and we'll switch up the orientation of this Y from box to box. But after drawing the Y shape, I will work on placing the other corners of the box. And then once I have the corners placed, then I will draw in the edges. And the most challenging part about this exercise is to make sure that your edges are all converging towards the same vanishing point. Although you might have a very clear picture of where the vanishing point is in your head, it can still be really difficult to draw a line that aligns towards the vanishing point itself. And even a small deviation in the angle can throw off the perspective of your box totally, and you'll just end up with a very wonky looking box. And as if the exercise is not difficult enough already, you kind of have to do it all freehand. So when you ghost your lines, you want to make sure that they are as straight as possible. I find that a lot of my ghosted lines are actually slightly curved and not perfectly straight and that can actually distort your box as well. Okay, so before I did this exercise, I felt like I had a pretty good grasp on how perspective works and drawing simple shapes like this cube or box shouldn't be too difficult. When I drew the first maybe 50 boxes, oh, well, they were so terrible. After extending the edges of the boxes to check the perspective, I realized that some of them weren't even boxes or cubes. They were more of like prisms or rectangles. So yeah, I was really humbled by the first 50 boxes or so. But it really does get easier. Because after having that few boxes under my belt, I started to pick up on certain cues and perspective rules that I can follow to make sure that my boxes don't look too wrong or distorted. And as I mentioned before, I will go through those in the later part of this video. So one thing that I did to get used to drawing these boxes in the beginning of the exercise is to start off with the Y in the same orientation every time. I just wanted to you know, get a good understanding of how to tackle this exercise before I make it more complicated. Okay, so when I finish a full page of boxes, I will do the check where I grab a different colored pen, and in this case, I'm using a blue pen, and I'll extend the edges of each box. What I want to do is extend the edges away from me towards the vanishing points. And what I'm looking for is to make sure that these edges are all converging towards the same point. If any of them are diverging or converging too fast, then I know that the edge is not lined up correctly and the perspective of this box is not very accurate. In the beginning, it's not very easy to get this right, but it does get better towards the end of this exercise. I found that after maybe boxes 150 and above, 
then I started to get really consistent results and most of my lines are generally going in the same direction. Although the angle might not be perfect, it's quite hard to tell with just the naked eye and without checking using a ruler. By the end of the exercise, I don't know if I can say that my perspective drawing is better, but I can definitely say that I'm much more comfortable with drawing freehand boxes floating in midair. Okay, so that's all 250 boxes drawn by me in the span of 6 hours across a few days. So let's hop into the next section of this video. Okay guys, so after drawing all those boxes, there are some things that I learned that I thought would be useful for you guys to know. Most of these are just general cues to pay attention to when drawing your box, but I find that they are very helpful for you to check the accuracy of your drawing. So what I'm going to do here is to draw a box and then explain my thought process and the cues that I pay attention to while doing it. Okay, so let's get right into it. First off, on the lesson page, Uncomfortable mentions that you should start your box by drawing a Y shape. So the first cue here is to keep all the arms of your Y shape kind of the same length. So let me show you what I mean by this. So let's say I'm going to draw my box now. I'm going to mark out the points of my Y shape like here. So what I'm going to do is now join the points using the ghosting method. Okay, so the first cue here is to make sure that these Y, the arms of this Y is like roughly the same length. Since we're drawing boxes here, which are basically cubes that are in perspective, all of their edges should be around the same length. But of course they all won't be exactly the same length because they are in perspective. So you don't want to go too crazy with them so that your box do doesn't look too distorted. So let me show you some examples of boxes with Y's that are very different lengths and you can see how not how wrong they look. So you can see here the y, these boxes that I drew up earlier. These Y's have uh, arms of different lengths and the resulting box doesn't look like it's square anymore. It doesn't look like a cube. It looks more like a rectangle. So that's not what you want to go for. I find that it's, you'll get a better looking box if you stick to Y's with arms of roughly the same length. Okay, so from here, the next part to draw are the other visible corners and edges. So what I do is I will mark out the corners first. And then I will join the corners with the, uh, I'll join the two corners to form the edges of the box. So my next tip is to use a dot to plan out the corners that you want to draw. So like here, I'll mark a dot on the, on the pitch. So then to draw in the edges, I'll join these two corners together. And then I'll join these. Okay, so now I have the first uh, rear corner and I have my first plane of the box. Okay, so now I want to move to the second corner dot. So once again, I'll put a dot just to plan it out. And if you're not happy with this position, you can always change it. So I think that uh, this dot is not, uh, this edge won't be correct. So I'm going to put another dot here where I think it's more of a correct position. Okay, so another cue to check when you're placing your corners is that it should be inside the region of the plane that is formed by the parallel lines of these edges. So, what do I mean by this? If I use a pencil to draw in the parallel lines of these edges, so let's, let me add a parallel line. So this is about parallel to this, and this is about parallel to this. You want to make sure that your corner doesn't lay outside of this plane. It has to be within this plane. So if your corner is outside, then you know that um, your box is going to appear wrong. So here's my next corner. So uh, why is this the case? This is because all the outer corners are actually further away from the viewer than these first four main corners. 
like this corner is actually behind the most uh, is the furthest end of the box so it's naturally further away so these edges since they are further away they will look shorter than these edges which are nearer that's why the corners has to be kind of closer towards the center another thing to note is that the closer you put your corner to the center of the box the nearer your vanishing point is going to be let me draw out the lines to show kind of what the vanishing point looks like so if i join this corner and ex extrapolate the lines you can see that the vanishing point is somewhere around this region here if i use this as my corner and i extrapolate these lines the vanishing point is actually very far away so if your corner is closer towards the center your vanishing point is also going to come closer and you're going to have a box with more exaggerated perspective so when i place the next corner i can sort of check the position by estimating where the vanishing point is how i do that is by looking at all the other edges of the box that are moving are converging at the same vanishing point if i want to draw in this edge i will refer to this edge and this edge i'm just going to eyeball it here let me just use a pencil to kind of draw it in. You can see the vanishing point is actually around here. When I draw this edge from this corner to the vanishing point, my corner has to lie on this line. This is the corner that I chose earlier, so I'm just going to use that. So it's one good way to kind of make sure that your corner lines up with the vanishing point. If you know your vanishing point is around here and then you see that your corner is all the way out here, you know that you're definitely wrong. Okay, so now I'm going to draw in the remaining corners and edges. Okay, so finally we need to do the inside or like the rear corner. This is the most difficult corner to place because it's affected by all three vanishing points at once. So when you place your dot, you want to make sure that it lines up with all the vanishing points. One thing you can do is look at one vanishing point at a time and try to establish where the dot is. For example, let me use this vanishing point. I see that these three edges are moving towards this vanishing point and when you put in the next dot there's going to be another edge that also follows this vanishing point i'll use this vanishing point as a reference to where the corner of the box is going to be so let me just estimate that this is going to be the next corner so now i move on to the next vanishing point and i do the same thing i estimate the vanishing point somewhere here so this vanishing point needs to link up with this. So I move the point over here. And then I do the same with all the remaining, remaining corners. And then once I'm happy with the positioning, I can go ahead and complete the box. Okay, so now that the edges are done, uh, you have your box. Uncomfortable advisors to darken the outer edges of the box just to give it a more solid feel. So this is what I'm going to do here. Also, I want to shade in the front face so that it's not so confusing to look at. There you go. And from here, I can go ahead to my next box or I can check the vanishing points for this one. Once again, these are just basic cues that just came to me when I was doing the 250 boxes exercise myself. I'm sure when you are doing the exercise, some form of these same basic ideas will come to you as well. However, they only started to solidify in my head when I was already at boxes like number 50 to 100. So I just wanted to share it with you so that you'll be able to increase the quality of your boxes much faster and get more out of this exercise. Alright, that's the end of the video. And if you found this helpful, consider subscribing to see more videos like this in the future. Bye-bye.